Hey guys, how's it going? Connor here today at eTrailer.com. We're going to be taking a look at the Curt T Connector Vehicle Wiring Harness here for our 2020 Toyota RAV4. Our Curt T Connector Wiring Harness is going to be an excellent option here for our RAV4. It's going to provide us with the standard four pole trailer connector, which is going to be used on most smaller and even some medium duty trailers. Now, this four pole connector here is going to have the basic lighting functions, such as the stop, turn signals, as well as the running light circuit. So our trailer connector is obviously going to be used mostly for pulling a trailer to activate the lights. However, we can also use this if we have a bike rack or cargo carrier with built-in tail lights. So in regards to mounting, we have a few different options. As we can see here, we have our trailer connector just routed out through the rear hatch area and loosely tied to our trailer hitch. And when we're done with it, we can fold it up and store it inside the vehicle. This is going to offer a wiring harness the most protection so we don't have to worry about any damage from the elements like corrosion which could cause trailer lighting issues. So the other option we have, which we're going to go into more detail later on in the video, is how to permanently mount our trailer connector to the outside of the vehicle here using a series of brackets. Now this is going to make for the most permanent installation, it's also going to be the most easiest to access, however we may run into some issues with corrosion because again our trailer connector is going to be stored on the outside of the vehicle. So in regards to installation, it's something that's going to be pretty straightforward, definitely something you can do at home by yourself because we're not going to need any special tools. I would also go so far as to say that this is definitely one of the easiest trailer wiring harnesses I've installed that connects behind the taillights. Everything's going to be plug and play, and the best part is we don't have to run that pesky power wire all the way up to the vehicle's battery because the battery on our particular model, since it is a hybrid, is going to be located in the rear hatch here. So when we're not using our trailer connector, all we do is simply want to wrap it up here in a nice little bundle, and we can easily store it below this floor covering so it's out of sight and out of mind until we need to use it. And now that we've gone over some of the benefits and features, Let's jump right into the installation and show you how easy this is to undo yourself. So to start our installation today, we need to come into the hatch of the vehicle here. We need to remove a couple panels. We're going to have to remove these two side panels here. We're also going to have to remove the trunk liner here, or the floor covering, if you will. So we're going to lift this up, and then we're just going to slide it out like so. So once we have the floor covering out, we can go ahead and remove these side panels next. These are simply just going to pop out like so. So now that we have those panels out, we have one more we need to remove, which is this rear scuff panel here. So we went ahead and just pulled back our weather stripping. Now we're going to take a pry tool. If you have a flat blade screwdriver, that would probably work as well. We're essentially just going to get up underneath this panel here and gently try to evenly pry up on both sides to release the locking tabs. Now once we have some of the tabs released, we're going to come on the inside of the vehicle here, see this lower portion of the scuff panel, and we're just going to pull this out and away from the body of the vehicle, working our way up to release the rest of the clips. Now we can set this aside. So now we need to come to our side panel here, and at the top we're going to have a push fastener we need to remove, one on either side. We're just going to take a trim panel tool. If you have a flat blade screwdriver, that should work as well. We basically just want to pry the center out. That should allow us to remove the rest of our fastener here. So now that we have our push fasteners removed from the top here, we want to come down underneath and remove our cargo hook using a 10 millimeter socket. And again, we need to do this same process on the passenger side of the vehicle as well. So now that we have all of our fasteners out of the side panel here, we need to go ahead and pry this back away from the vehicle, starting with the bottom and working our way to the top. So there's going to be some push fasteners along the bottom edge here. We can use our trim panel tool to try to release those, or we can get our fingers up under there and just sort of try, pry back. And we're going to work our way up at the top we need to separate these two panels here, which we can see it just pulls out like so. So now that we have our panel peeled back, 
we need to go ahead and look for our, ta our taillight pigtail, which is gonna be this yellow, yellowish, whitish four pin connector, which is gonna be attached to this little bracket here. Uh, we just held up the pigtail from our T connector kit to ensure that's the correct one. So we need to get this loose from this little bracket here so we have more room to work with. In order to do that, we're gonna simply just sort of pry it off here. Just like that. And then we can go ahead and release this connector here by pressing down on this little tab and then pulling out just like so. So now that we have the tail light connector released from the housing here on the driver's side, we're gonna wanna take our T connector wiring harness the one with the yellow wire is the side we're gonna be working with first. And we're just gonna splice these in line with the factory connectors that we removed. We wanna hear that audible click to make sure it's locked into place. Just like that. So now that we have our driver's side taillight connection made, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and clamp on our butt connector to our black wire, which is for 12 volt power. And we're actually gonna go ahead and attach part of our power wire, which needs to be run to the battery at this time. So we'll crimp that on there. Then I will take the other part of our wiring here, which comes with the kit here. What I'm gonna have to do is, I'm gonna have to strip a little bit of the jacket off the end of our wire here. And then I'm gonna insert this into the other end of our butt connector. And after we crimp it, I just like to give it a nice good snug to make sure it's secure in both ends. So at this point, we're gonna be routing our four pole connector inside the vehicle. However, there's also an option to route the four pole connector outside the vehicle and secure it to the trailer hitch using a few other brackets. Now this is gonna leave the trailer connector more subjected to corrosion and dirt. However, it's gonna be easier to access mount, mounted on the outside of the vehicle. As you can see here, we have a grommet. All we'd have to do is cut the trailer connector off of our wiring harness, route the wires through the grommet, and then we can splice it back on with some butt connectors and secure it to the trailer hitch. So now that we have our power wire partially ran, we're gonna go ahead and mount our converter box here using the double-sided tape that comes with our kit. I'm gonna peel one in back, stick it to the back side of our converter box, and press it on so it gets good adhesion. Then we can take the other side off here and mount this to the body of the vehicle. We're gonna be using the flat plane surface directly below this panel here. Now once we have a good place, we're just gonna hold it there for a second to make sure it sticks. Just like that. So now we're gonna take our ground wire here, as well as the self-tapping screw that comes with our kit. We're gonna find a suitable grounding point. We're just gonna use a bare metal surface directly beside the converter box here. give it a little wiggle to make sure it's tight. So now we want to take our green pigtail here which is going to go to the passenger side taillight housing. We're going to unwind this and I think what we're going to do is we're going to use some tape to secure it to the inside of this wheel well here for our spare tire. So if we take a look down here in the wheel well of the vehicle here we see we have our green wire just taped here to the body to secure it. And now we have our pigtail on this side. We need to pull back this panel and plug it into the tail light connector, which is gonna be up here, similar to how we did on the driver's side of the vehicle. So once we have our passenger side tail light pigtail plugged in, we're gonna go ahead and pull our four pole connector here, wiring harness, just sort of out of the way of our panel. And now we can finish button everything up on the inside of the vehicle. So normally at this point, once we have all the panels buttoned up on the inside of the vehicle, we'd go underneath and we'd route our power wire to the battery in the engine compartment. However, our particular model is a hybrid here, so there isn't gonna be a 12 volt battery that we can access in the engine bay. Instead, our 12 volt battery is gonna be in the rear hatch area here on the passenger side. In order to access this, we need to first 
pull this panel off. We have a couple tabs here, which are gonna allow us to remove this sort of net. And now we have the center section here, which needs to come out. We need to pry up and pull down and out like that. As you can see here, this is our 12 volt battery. And this is where we're gonna run our power wire from the converter box to here on the hybrid model. So what we did is we took our power wire under this little side panel here. We taped it to the body of the vehicle, similar to how we did with the green wire that went to the back of our passenger side taillight housing. We ran along here and then I just looped it under this panel. Now you can see we have the excess here. So now that we have our power wire ran next to the battery, we need to go ahead and remove this protective cover by depressing these two tabs on either side, pulling that off, and that's gonna reveal access to our positive battery cable. What we can do now is we need to cut off some extra wire because we're not gonna need near this much. So we're just gonna trim it like so, about here, and get rid of our extra power wire, get it out of the way for now. Now we need to go ahead and attach our fuse holder. So we're gonna strip back some of the jacket here on our wire. The jacket on our fuse wire is actually pre-stripped. We're gonna take a butt connector here, which comes with the kit. We're just gonna clamp that on. To both ends here. Give it a nice little tug to make sure it's secure. Now we have our other end here, which is gonna get attached to our ring terminal, which again is included with the kit. Just like that. Now we wanna take a 12 millimeter socket, remove that flange nut on top of our positive battery terminal here. Once we get that off, we can go ahead and attach the ring terminal from our power wire and secure that back down. Just like that. Now, last but not least, we can insert our 10 amp fuse into our fuse holder here can button up the rest of our panels and then we can test our trailer lights to make sure everything's working. And now that we have everything hooked up, we're gonna go ahead and use a four pole circuit tester here, which you can obtain through eTrailer.com. We could also use the trailer to test our four way. However, that wouldn't allow us to separate the problem between the tow vehicle or the trailer if there was an issue. So we're gonna apply the brakes here to make sure that signal is working. Our left turn, our right turn, and then finally our tail lights. And now that we've tested all our lights, that's gonna do it today for our look and install of the Kurt T-Connector Vehicle Wiring Harness here for our 2020 Toyota RAV4.